Right here, gigantic Tet feast, and I cannot wait to dig in. Let's do this. That means Happy New Year's in Vietnamese. Today we're going to be talking about Tet, or the Lunar New Year, which is the biggest holiday celebration throughout the year in Vietnam. I'm talking Christmas and Thanksgiving combined. I'm going to be traveling throughout Vietnam trying all the amazing traditional Tet food. Tet, or the Lunar New Year holiday, is the biggest celebration throughout the year in Vietnam. It celebrates the arrival of spring and usually takes place between January and February. People from all across the country make the journey home to be with their family, relax, and feast on traditional Tet foods. From north to south, the traditional foods of Tet vary. And over this three video Tet series, I'm going to try as many as possible. I can't get over it. That texture is so crazy. Kai, can you hear it? I'll start with this huge traditional northern feast in Hanoi. He's made this kind of like a flower. Yes. Out of pork skin. That's crazy. <laughs> Including a very unique meatball vegetable jello. Which color do you think is the most tasty? This is earth, right? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna try earth. On day two, I'll head to Da Nang to try some Central Vietnamese Tet food with Helen from the YouTube channel Helen's Recipes. Galango, I've never even heard of that. Okay. Really? Kind you of... tried dog meat before? Galango Do and dog meat is on way together. <laughs> <laughs> and on day three, I'll head back south near Saigon, where I'll learn how to make the famous Ban Tet. Really beautiful. So she's kind of put a heel or a cap on one end. Mm -hmm. And she's gonna pack it down to make sure it's super tight. That is gonna boil later on for six hours. Yes. And maybe I'll even receive some lucky money on the way. Today we're in Hanoi, heading to a place called Hang Sun, a restaurant serving mainly traditional Vietnamese foods, with a chef driven by quality and the food to prove it. I'll get to sample their menu before taking on an entire Hanoian Tet feast. Let's get started. Today we are in Hang Sun, a restaurant giving a modern twist to some keep it going, to some classic Vietnamese dishes. I might have messed up, but I don't care. We got limited time, we are charging through today. This was gonna be a cool intro, but uh, there's a restaurant. It's gonna have really good food. Let's just go in there and uh, let's eat. Huh? Actually, they have a menu right here. Right off the bat, dozens and dozens of dishes. I was here the other day and they told me they have customers coming five days a week that they're so amped about the menu that they had tried food over and over and over again that they had to expand the menu to keep everybody happy. That's how in demand this place is. This looks great. Let's go inside in slow motion. Wandering around Hang Sun's dining room, it's easy to see this mysterious simmering dish is a huge hit, and I can't wait to learn more about it. Before diving right in, a Hang Sun team member will help me get more acquainted with their menu. Hang, Hang Sun? Hang Sun. Hang Sun? Yeah. Right now, we're in Hang Sun. <laughs> This interview is going really well. We tried to seek the original food from Hanoi long, long, long time ago. 70% of our food here are traditional. Let's take a quick look at the menu. And some of the stuff I recognize and some I don't. Would you recommend this one? Yes, I recommend this one for okay. you. Is there... How about chaka? The most famous this here is with chaka, with the traditional chaka. This yeah. is very like common traditional food, right? Yes. Just in the north? Yeah, just in the north. What kind of fish is that again? It's a hemi bagus. That's a chaka. Chaka. Am I saying it kind of right? Yeah, chaka. Yeah. Okay. Maybe you can get the, the fish too much together. Oh, whoa! I you don't see it. Why not? Uh, I've never had a fish stomach. I didn't even think it was big enough to eat. Like, so is this from the same kind of fish? Yes. Uh, fish stomach? Yes. Perfect, thank you so much. The food has begun to arrive. It's right here. These are a bunch of the side dishes that are gonna go with this, our big fish dish. But first, we've got uh, this. What is it called actually, off camera person? Here we have what is basically a tapioca cake with little shrimpies inside, inside of a bana uh, banana leaf. This is the traditional way to open it. And inside we will reveal our tapioca creation. Wow, it's really interesting. It's kind of translucent. The texture is a bit gummy. And we're gonna put it in the sauce. We have a special kind of fish sauce here. Let's give it a little dip in the fish sauce and let's try it out. Mmm. Yummy face number one. I like it. And there's pork inside too. Right? Is there pork inside? Yeah. And there's pork inside too. Food expert. Just like the name says. Just like this title card says. 
Mm. Okay, that was a great start. We've got fish on the way. We're starting our Bunsen burner right here. Oh. So here's our fish. It has been pre kind of seared on a flat top. The top and bottom is browned. And then it's on this heaping bed of fresh dill and spring onions. For me, this is really cool to see because there's a ton of fresh herbs used in all the different food here. But I haven't seen dill a lot and I haven't actually seen dill sauteed like this. And then right now, she's dumping in the fish stomach. Oh, that is a lot. Of, that is from like 48 fish. Okay, come on. Are you staying here? I don't know what's happening. Oh, so she's, they help you cook at the table. The fire's getting going. I hear a lot of sizzling happening. We're gonna do a really quick, is this, hi, does this sound pretty good? Quick foodie ASMR. Can you hear it? All right, I'm gonna grab some of this fish. And then we've got our spoon noodles here. We're gonna grab a few more herbs. And then this is where the shrimp paste comes in. Fish in the sauce. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Oh, that is like a flavor explosion. Oh, that's so yummy. Yummy fish number two. Like kind of a firm, a bit fatty fish, but you have this really intense shock of the fermented shrimp paste with the really fresh dill. With that and the noodles all together, it's outstanding. And I expected the prices here to be really high because everything looks fancy, the menu, the layout of the place, but this dish alone is 120,000. It's about six dollars. It's really amazing. What we're gonna do next though is the fish stomach. So why don't I start with like three at once? I'm so curious about this fish stomach. It just looks like a normal stomach, but tiny. Uh, I'm just gonna try the first one plain and alone. Cause I just want the full fish stomach experience. Let's go for it. Oh, that's really good. What? These taste amazing. Just, it takes on the flavor of what's in here. So it's got the oil and it's got the dill, but the texture, it is like perfectly chewy. It's like, the, uh, it's hard to, what is it like? It's like a intestine, but if it was really thin, almost crunchy. Okay, listen, we are just getting started here. This was an awesome introduction to the restaurant. I was looking at their menu and I stumbled upon the back page here. And would you look at that? So if you're having a hard time choosing what to eat, there's about 15 different dishes here. I'm gonna ask very nicely and see if they'll prepare this one for me. Cooking for the Tet Feast is underway and I'm headed to the kitchen to see how the chef brings the magic together. As the first uh, pigeon, we marinate with some sauce and pepper. Oh. After that, we fry it until brown. This is a pigeon? Yeah. Where'd you get it, from just outside? <laughs> oh, from the market. Oh, that's good, that's good, that's good. Yeah. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Yes. Wow, I don't think I've ever mm. had my first pigeon. I'm in the kitchen with the head chef of this restaurant, which is a huge honor and pleasure for me. Thank you so much for having me. You're creating this huge meal. This meal is like kind of a traditional feast, and I'm getting schooled on some of this traditional food. Do you know what it is? Um, no, I have no idea, what is that? That is a box skin. Pork skin? Yeah. What? It's like a giant flat yes. sponge. Can I can I bite this? No. No, don't eat it. Okay. <laughs> so we have this pork skin here. It's gonna mm. be part of one of our soups. He's made a beautiful star mm. out of pork skin. Some some people they say the korabi. Ah, korabi. korabi. You call it Chinese apple? Yes. Oh interesting. Can I eat it? Yes. Mmm. Not sweet. These are actually seasonal vegetables. Um, well, except I'm pretty sure the pork skin, this vegetable you can get anytime. Right now we're throwing in a bunch of vegetables. We have our kohlrabi, cauliflower. White color first, second green, and the rest color the first. The last one, we're going with orange. We got our carrots. Rồi, tiếp đó mình sẽ đến trần bóng em ơi. Anh sẽ trần bóng nha. Wait, wait, where, uh, where are those going? <laughs> I thought maybe we're cooking food for another table or something. Oh, they came back. They're back. He just took the water out. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now we put on the box skin on the stock. It's a, it's a chicken stock oh. with some shrimp and the mas dry mushroom and dry shrimp. Oh. And we put in some... some ginger? Uh, yes. Mm. Real ginger. And he's putting the pork skin in there now. So we put those in there for a little bit to soak up all those beautiful juices. Juicy, spongy pork skin. So we're putting... Vegetables. You're like a, an artist of pork skin. A pork skin artist. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. He's made this kind of like a flower. Yes. Out of pork skin. That's crazy. <laughs> I can't wait to try some of this pork skin. It looks just super spongy. Like it's just soaked up all the juices from that soup. What is the name of that dish? Canh bóng. 
Kang Bong. Kang Bong Ta. Mm. That's so cool. He just he just whips that up like it's nothing. Look at this. Look at this huge platter of food. <laughs> First of all, it is my honor and my pleasure to be here today to experience this gigantic Tet kind of feast. As a foreigner, Tet is a lonely time where you just walk the streets, uh, there's tumbleweeds rolling by, everybody is home with their family, and you're trying to find food, and all you can find is 7-Eleven. This is a lot better. So a couple things stand out to me right off the bat. Here is this um, jalo. Yeah, similar with, from this one, but it's more flavoring because we fry on this side. That looks beautiful, and I yes. love the shapes that they've created out of these. I just watched him make this. It looks beautiful. It's got the pigeon, mushroom, uh, the lotus seeds on there, and this is actually a soup. Yes. And they're gonna put some broth on here? Yes. Okay, and actually these three middle ones are all different types of soup, yeah? Yes. It looks like a vegetable jello. What is going on here? We all mix the vegetable inside and you can see here it has the five colors. Mm. It then for the fifth basic elements, the Ooh. fine metal, water, yeah. the wood, and the earth. Well, I cannot wait to dig into this. So right now they've just brought the special broth and each soup has its own special broth? Yes. Broth one, done. I can smell it from here. This isn't something people would normally order and eat in the restaurant. They would have it delivered to their home, is that right? Yes. Can I grab one of these sausages? Yes. Would someone uh, eat just the whole sausage? Yes. Okay. Especially kids. Oh, <laughs> perfect. That's perfect for me. This is kids' food. Mmm. Oh, I know it's just kind of simple processed sausage, but I really like this. Like the most popular sausage in Vietnam, so yummy. Hanoi, like because like the pork you can see here, they have many layers, like mm. one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, this yeah. Is crazy! Look at these layers. Like we've got the crispy skin yeah. on the outside. One look. more special thing about the traditional meal that like we use a sauce together. Okay, that's fine with me. It has meaning that like we don't really care about the like the boss season or like the genders or ah. any. Yeah. So it shows it's like kind equals of equality. Everyone, yeah. Wow. Oh, it's not just sauce, it's like a symbol. Let's try it out. Mmm. Mmm. -hmm. Oh, amazing flavor, great textures. You can really taste every layer. You know, I saw the chef making this. I thought this was really I fascinating. I think I should I try this soup. These layers here yeah. are like big, spongy pieces of pork skin. I'm so pumped to try it. I asked in the kitchen, can I eat this? He said no, but now is the time. Because I... This type of skin normally they absorb on the on the best thing of the soup. That is so uncanny. It's like eating bubble wrap with tiny, <laughs> tiny bubbles. So as you chew it, it's like falling apart in your mouth. Whoa, I've never had a texture like that. These are the main two I saw him making, and he's got the abalone on here. Pigeon abalone soup. Yes. I just never imagined those two things coming together. Let's try it out. Okay. Mmm. Mm. Abalone is perfect. Abalone in every situation is perfect. That's true. You're tasting and squeezing out the juices of the chicken stock in there. And then to eat the pigeon, dig in there, it's really bony. It's like a runway model. Let's work on that later. What is this one? It's sticky rice. Actually, like, we use a lot in like making dead holiday food because like, it has a red color. It means luck. Mm. What? That's crazy. It's like squash mixed with rice. It tastes like the holidays. Ever since I saw this in the menu picture, it looks like a vegetable jello. And you said there's little meatballs inside, each color representing one of the elements, one of the five elements. Yes. Which color do you think is the most tasty? This is earth, right? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna try earth. I'm gonna just stab it and grab it. Oh, look at that. Red is fire. Yes. Yeah. Let's go for it. Oh. That's really good. This is like the most unique meatball presentation I have ever seen. We're obviously not gonna eat this by ourselves. As soon as we wrap this up, the whole team, we're all gonna join together and enjoy this feast. But first, I do wanna show the people watching some of your traditional dessert, which is right here, this brown rice. It's got some sesame seeds and, and coconut shavings on top. And you would usually have it with the tea. Oh, yeah, really thick, dense, sticky rice. Let's go for it. Can you taste ginger? Mm -hmm. Pretty like strong ginger flavor in there. Sweet rice, some coconut, some chewiness from the coconut. That's awesome. Which is really amazing and special. Now I know what I've been missing out on. Next time, I'm just gonna find a family to hang out with because, dude, look at this. This is incredible. Thank you so much for this opportunity and this experience. Uh, it was really special for me and, and absolutely delicious. So, yes. thank you it, very much. 
It has been a pleasure. This TED series is made possible by One Trip Vietnam. Check back next video as I join Da Nang local Helen of Helen's Recipes to see how some classic Central Tet dishes are made. One Trip is a company putting on tours in Saigon, Hoi An, Da Nang, and many more cities to come. Food tours, adventure tours, and more. One Trip provides the best local experiences throughout Vietnam. For more information on One Trip, check out links in the description down below, and I'll see you tomorrow. A peace. Why don't you stay? Stay, cause I can read.